What's up guys and welcome back to the Rise of Empires guide. I'm Kalistos of State 119 and today we're going to be having another episode of the tips and strategies for Rock and Eden. And in this video specifically we're going to be talking more in depth about poison tiles. We're going to be talking about what you need, how it works and more importantly all the why. Because once we learn all the details on how it works and what we need for it, you can apply that concept to no matter what hero combo you have available and no matter what castle you have. Okay, so we have to start with the beginning. Attacking a tile requires loyalty. Attacking a tile with less loyalty than required is gonna deal the difference as percentage poison damage. And it's important to go back to this factor to understand the elements that we are interested in. The poison damage is dealt for each round of the battle and is calculated as a percentage of the amount of troop each hero has. And with all this in mind, we kind of have all the information we need to know the problem. Now let's try and fix it. So first of all, I need to specify that there is no stats in Rise of Empires to minimize the damage you take from poison types, which means the only solution we have is to do it in a way where we take the least amount of poison damage. And for that we need to focus on how the damage is dealt. Remember that is dealt for each round of the battle. Which means the most efficient way is we need to win the battle in the first round. That is the key secret when it comes to poison tile. You need enough damage and enough burst to do it in the first round. Like that you only get one round of poison damage and even if the percentage is at 95% you still have that 5% left at the end to still win the battle. Now the damage itself won't be enough, you also need speed. Because it doesn't matter to have a hero that can deal a lot of damage if it takes a long time to do it. As I said, we need it in the first round. If you're asking yourself but what about the damage that the troops themselves deal? The Damage from the troops, no matter what type of level of tile you're hitting, is never gonna be equal to a percentage amount of damage. And you're most probably gonna have more than enough resistance to not worry about that damage, which means the poison damage is our main focus. And until you can kill the troops in the first round, your main priority is damage stats. Now the same like the Beast Queen combo is a very famous combo for poison tiles, also the concept of having might for poison tile became famous but people forget that the only reason you wanted might is specifically for the beast queen combo for anybody that doesn't know might applies to basic attacks and tactical might applies to skill damage and the majority of heroes actually deal skill damage and not basic yes they have the basic attack but they don't focus for it if we break down the Beast Queen combo and all the skills, we're gonna see a lot of the factors of why it's so amazing for it. First of all is the burst damage. All the damage the Beast Queen combo does is focused in the first 3 to 4 rounds. And that makes it optimal for what we're looking for as we want the damage as much as possible, as fast as possible. Second of all is the consistency. It's something that you want to search for in any hero you're going to be using for this. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of potential damage. If the percentage of success to deal that damage is low, then the inconsistency is going to cost you more troops than having a more consistent but lower hero. And the reason why the Beast Queen combo is actually so consistent is because of the fact that Rose and Beast Queen skills are passive and they apply every single battle the same way and every single time you expect the same result out of it. The only one that has a bit of variety and does involve skill damage is Immortal himself. And this is why people got used to the concept of might is good for poison tiles because it's very good for beast queen combo. Most of the damage is applied as basic attack and this is why might stacks up really nice. But if you're using something else like, I don't know, Avalanche or the Ellis combo, you're gonna want tactical might as your damage is dealt as skill damage. 
Now that doesn't go to say that if a hero is mainly prioritizing skill damage, you shouldn't be worrying about might, as those auto attacks do stack up the damage. Another thing that people know but not know why is why when you're attacking poison tiles you want to be putting immortal first and then rose and then beast queen and the reason again is the passive skills of rose and beast queen those passive skills will apply no matter how many troops you have on the hero and you actually just need troops for the front line because that's also going to be taking the damage from the defending troops of the tile second of all immortal as i said has skill damage included, which means the amount of troops he's commanding does influence the damage he's gonna deal for it. But that also means you can have less troops on Rose and Beast Queen in the back, which will still apply buffs to Immortal, so that only he takes the majority of the poison damage and therefore minimize the amount of troops you're gonna lose with each round. Like that you can have more troops on Immortal and almost no troops on Beast Queen and Rose. And this is another factor to talk about, minimizing the troops you lose while attacking Poison Tile. We already discussed the main focus, which is we need to kill the defending troops in the first round, but once we achieve that goal, then we can focus on other things to further optimize the way we are taking the Poison Tiles. Usually a very good hero combo is gonna have more than enough damage to deal with the troops inside the tile and therefore you can use less troops in the legion so that the percentage is representing less troops because 10% from 100,000 troops is not the same as 10% from 60,000 troops. Now this mentality of heroes kind of makes people get stuck on to that idea. I need better heroes, I need better heroes but they forget about all the extra buffs they can add to increase the damage because again it doesn't matter what heroes you have all that matters is you get that damage for the first round so that means you should also use as much extra buffs as you can for your legion remember that your class legion has extra buffs from the riders hall remember you can use your attack and the defense bonus from your national card you can add extra might or tactical might depending on what your heroes need and all the extra buffs coming from your tech and other sources. Every single bit adds up for you to achieve the important goal of killing the troops in the first round. Once that's done, that's your optimal way of taking poison time. Now before finishing the entire subject, as I said at the beginning, there is no stats in Rise of Empires to minimize the damage you take from poison damage. But that doesn't mean you cannot recover the troops once they got poisoned. And for that, we have the heroes that have recovery skills. And yes, that skill also applies to the troops that were poisoned. So if we manage to still achieve the killing the troops in the first round part, that while using recovery heroes like lawmen or army, then do it because like that you're not just doing the same thing but you're also recovering troops from the ones that got poisoned and with that i think i covered what i wanted to discuss for this video guys thank you very much for joining in. don't forget if you enjoyed this type of content leave a like comment if you have any questions share it with your friends and of course subscribe to get notified of all the new videos coming out but that's it for me Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next videos. Cause we keep the truth to